Hey everybody, this is Barry Zondel at Volusion Studios, and today I wanted to uh, follow up on a Twitter post that I put up um, that showed how to take uh, some high-resolution uh, meshes created with displacement and create game-ready assets out of them. Um, I saw a video by one of the uh, Unreal developers, uh, Horenses, and he did a kind of a demo of his um, game Solus, and he talked about how he made all the rock, the rock. Uh, assets for his game and he used textures to do it and I wanted to see if I could do the same thing and, and see if I could do it in Modo and what it would take and then let everybody see that. So what I'm going to do here is I've started a new scene and I imported these uh, images. Now these images are from GameTextures.com um, and they're they're just 1K textures of this jagged rocky surface. So I'm going to use these to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to my basic uh, tab in my model tab and I'm just going to hold shift and create a new plane mesh and so that I can see the subdivisions a lot better I'm going to hit O in the in the viewport here and uncheck work plane and grid so I just got a single polygon right now but I want to subdivide that so I'm going to grab it select it and then I'm going to go to mesh edit and subdivide faceted twice now you'll notice that that probably isn't very much <laughs> Uh, that's only 32 polygons, and it's probably not enough to uh, to show uh, good displacement. And so, um, or it's actually only 16 polygons. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the maps to, to do this. Now, Moto has a really good way of doing this using subdivision surfaces. So really quickly about subdivision surfaces is if you hit tab, you'll go into what's called subdiv mode right here. Okay. And that's the normal way of doing subdivision surfaces in Moto. Um, but if you hit Shift Tab, like this, you'll go into what's called Catmull Clark. And, you, and you'll notice that you didn't see anything really change. But what you're not noticing is it's keeping the edges all intact, the border edges all intact. Whereas um, Polygon, mo or I mean, going to normal subdiv mode actually smooths all that out. So I use Catmull Clark most of the time. Um, it's like Pixar Sub D's, um, the open subdiv stuff that's out there. And so that does a lot better job uh, of the subdivision surface for me for this. So I'm going to actually create the material for this now so we can get going on it. So I'm going to hit three, double click all of these, uh, hit three to go into face mode, and then double click to select them all, hit M, and we're going to call it Rock Plane. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do is we want to go over to our shading tab and let's go to the render tab real quick. And I just want to take some of these and drop them into this material. And I want to take the uh, diffuse, the height, the specular, and the normal NY plus. And what it is is in Unreal, the Y normal is reversed. So um, you, need to, you need to have a flipped version of it uh, to work. And it works great. So I'm going to take all those four and I'm going to drop them into this material right here. And then what I need to do is assign those each to the correct channel. So diffuse is correct. Height is going to be displacement. So I'm going to right click, say surface shading displacement. Specular is going to be specular color. Okay, so I'm going to go to basic specular color. And then NY plus is the normal surface shading normal. And we're good to go. So now I'm going to go back to my model tab and I can see I've got this nice looking material on here. Okay, but the displacement isn't working very well because I don't have enough geometry to work with. So what we're going to do is I want to use my subdivision surfaces to be able to do that. Uh, and so when I hit tab, you'll notice I get a lot better definition on that displacement, even though it's still not very much. Let's crank up the displacement a little bit. And the way you do that is you go to the material properties and then go down to uh, displacement distance. Instead of 20 millimeters, change it to 50 millimeters. Now I'm seeing a lot better definition on here. And it's still a little jagged. Uh, you can still see peaks and separate polygons. I'm not getting the greatest subdivision here, but I'm getting a, a, a much better representation of that, of that uh, displacement. But let's do a much better job of getting the displacement correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit, um, we're gonna hit tab to go out of that. And you'll notice that it goes out of subdivision surfaces. 
and then back to Captain Clark. Now I want to I want my subdivision or subdivision when I subdivide it to go a little deeper and to add more subdivisions. So the way that you do that, you select the mesh and you go in your mesh properties to the Catmull Clark subdivision tab right here and change the subdivision level to six. And what you notice is that now I'm getting really good definition on this uh, on this surface. Okay. So now that I've got really good definition on that displacement, that does me no good in a game engine unless I have vertices to match that because I, I'm not really going to be doing displacement on the fly. You can do that, but it's expensive and we don't want to deal with that for this. So um, what I want to do now is I want to freeze this. So I'm actually going to go to my item list. I'm going to duplicate this just so I have a copy of it. Hit duplicate. And then I'm going to hide the original. And on this duplicate, what I'm going to do is go to geometry freeze and I'm going to leave all the settings the way they are and I'm going to hit OK and then it's going to bake that out so now what it did is it did six subdivision levels of vertices and baked that dis that displacement into the vertex locations so now I have this nice mesh that has all the displacement and it's all shaped correctly and uh, I don't have to worry about a displacement map anymore however it's got way too much geometry, and I don't want to. I don't want to worry about that. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to. Um, I want to reduce this, so I'm going to click on it and go to Geometry Reduction Tool, and let's go to 1,000 polygons. It could be you know a lot less. This is less than one percent. Okay. And you've got boundary weights and material border weights and all that kind of stuff that you can do. Uh, just leave it as is and hit Apply, and it's going to churn through there and reduce it so that there's 1,003 polygons on there. See that? So we went from 131,000 polygons down to 1,003 polygons. And if I click off of it here, so you can see it, um, looks pretty good still. I still get all that definition where I need it to be. Uh, it's kind of jagged and stuff, but it does, pretty, it does a pretty good job. Now, one thing that you'll notice is there are places on this that are very faceted, uh, where the shading of the, the normals um, doesn't look correct and it gives it kind of the, that polygon look, that um, peaked look. So the way that we need to get around this is we need to tell the game engine how to, how to look at the vertex normals or how to calculate the vertex normals um, by, by the mesh or by looking at the mesh properties rather than trying to do it on the fly. And the way that we do that is create a vertex normal map. So if I go over my list tab right here and go to other maps you'll notice there's nothing there. Uh, and so we want to create one. So what I'm going to do is I want to smooth out all these normals so that they're so that they shade correctly. So I'm going to go to the material, and under properties, I'm going to go down to where it says smoothing angle. Now, if I hit smoothing angle to zero, that means every edge is going to be um, hard, a hard edge. But if I go to 180, it means that every edge is a smooth edge. And you'll notice how it changed a little bit. And now I don't get that those ridge looks uh, so much on the geometry. Okay, so now that I've done that, I go back to my list and I click on the object and I go geometry, or excuse me, vertex map, set vertex normals, and it says, here's your map, what do you want to name it, and do you want to use the smoothing angle, and I do. So I hit OK, and now I have a map that says vertex normals, and that is baked into the vertices. Okay, so now that, that data will go through with the FBX to the engine, and the engine will be able to interpolate that and, and um, display the normals correctly. Okay. So now that I have that done, I went from 131,000 polygons with a really nice displacement map down to 1,000 polygons where the displacement is there, um, but it's not. there's not so many polygons so I can use it in a game engine. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take that stuff into Unreal uh, or any other game engine, but it'll be Unreal for this one, um, and, and how to set that up and use it. And Hopefully this goes straight across in Unreal so it's pretty much usable right out of the box when you import the FBX. So the next step would be to export the FBX to wherever you want to and then go into your engine of choice and import the FBX and set up the shaders. So that's what we'll do in the next one.